So do you really need to edit your photos and just how much difference does it actually make to your images? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today as I break down the four reasons why editing your photos is an important part of the photography process and exactly how it can take your photos to the next level. Plus, at the end of this episode, I'll also share with you exactly how to get started editing your photos and I'm going to share a couple of freebies with you that you are going to find incredibly helpful, especially if you feel overwhelmed with the editing process or you feel like you're randomly pulling on sliders rather than editing with purpose. So let's dive in. Hey there, I'm Audrianne, founder of Live Snap Love, and I'm on a mission to help photographers just like you grow their photography skills quickly and in a way that feels simple and easy so you can shorten the learning curve and get photos you love faster. I created this Photography Made Simple podcast to share simple, actionable techniques, helpful insights and practical advice on all things photography. So if you're itching to take your photos to the next level, whatever that level may be, you're in the perfect place. So let's get started. Well, hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Photography Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, Audrianne, and I'm thrilled that you've tuned in today because we've got to talk about something important, and that is editing your photos. If there's one thing that comes up again and again when we talk about photography, it's editing. The steps you take after you've pressed the shutter and uploaded your images. It's a whole other world of things to learn and master, and as such, it can feel really overwhelming. And because it's yet another thing you need to add to your to-do list, it can be tempting not to bother doing it or just slapping on an action or a preset and calling it a day. I also know that some photographers feel like they want their photos to be natural, so they feel like they don't need to edit. And maybe there's another smaller set of people who think that editing is cheating in some way, so don't want to do it. But as I believe that editing your images is an important part of the photography process and one that you should start to learn as soon as possible, today I'm going to break down that four reasons why editing your photos is pretty much a must-do when it comes to photography. So the first reason is your images always need to be processed. It's simply a question of whether you do it or the camera does it. So when you take an image, your camera captures it in the raw file format. Now, if you don't know, this is a file format that contains all the image information captured by the camera's sensor. And this is regardless of whether you have your camera set to shoot in RAW or JPEG. Your camera will always capture the image in the RAW file format. But if you have your camera set to shoot in JPEG, your camera will take this RAW file that it captured the image in, it will add some saturation to the colors, it will apply some contrast, some noise reduction, and a little bit of sharpening too. It then flattens this raw file, bakes in all that editing information, and then gives it to you as a JPEG file. Now, although that sounds just dandy because it's like shooting in auto, it's not the best option for getting images that you love. And that's because our camera really doesn't have a clue about what you've just captured. It doesn't know whether it needs any of that editing just applied. So it doesn't know whether your image would look better with less or more contrast or whether the amount of saturation it has applied is just making that color cast on your subject's face worse. All it can do is blindly apply a preset, predetermined level of editing and it just hopes for the best. On the other hand, you can process the image. You switch from shooting in JPEG to shooting in the raw file format. And in doing so, the camera leaves the editing alone. 
you can then apply the contrast, the saturation, the sharpening, and anything else you might want to do in your image, which we'll get onto in a little bit later. But each at the level you like and what the photo needs. So that's why I always recommend that you shoot in RAW so that you can have that full control over the editing process. So just like shooting in manual mode gives you the most control over how your image is captured in camera, shooting in RAW and processing the image yourself gives you the most control about how your final image will look. Now, I know that one of the reasons you might not want to shoot in RAW is because you're not yet 100% sure how to edit your photos. So I have a couple of things that will help you. First of all, you can set your camera to shoot in both JPEG and RAW. And I don't recommend you stay there for long, but at least that way you'll have the safety net of your JPEG image, but also the RAW file that you can start to learn how to edit on. You can also download my free Lightroom Starter Kit, which has a few different resources for you for learning Lightroom Classic. And one of these is an editing checklist. And this is going to help you see exactly what goes into editing an image, and it gives you this framework to work to. So it's gonna take away some of the guesswork for you. When you download that, you'll also get an invite to watch my free Lightroom class. And this is where you'll be able to see how editing to a framework makes it so much easier because you don't have to guess at how much to move a slider by or what you should be doing next. So I'm going to link to both of those in the show notes for this episode over at livesnaplove.com forward slash nine, or you'll also find links to them around where you're listening to this podcast. Now, I'm sorry, that's only going to be useful for you if you use Lightroom Classic, but don't worry, I'm going to give you an editing overview later in this episode. So stay tuned for that. Let's move on now to the second reason why editing your photos is important. And that's because it gives you a second chance to get it right. Because despite your best intentions, you might not always get it 100% right in camera. Now we should always strive to get as much as we can correct when taking the picture. But no matter how good you are, there are times when you're going to get things wrong. For example, you might forget to change your white balance so that all your images come out with the wrong color tones. You may mess up the exposure or not see the trash can that's lurking in the background and that's ruining your shot, but you didn't see it when shooting. So editing can be a way of getting a second chance to get the image the way you would have wanted to capture it in camera. And by the way, although you can edit a JPEG image, because most of the information encoded in a JPEG is baked in, any edits done to the file are destructive and there's going to be that slight loss in image quality. So it's less destructive to edit a raw file. Plus, shooting in the raw file format gives you more latitude than editing than with a JPEG. Because remember, it captures that whole tonal range. So you get a lot more leeway when it comes to bringing back blown highlights or adjusting the exposure. It also allows you to change the white balance preset easily, something you can't do with a JPEG. So editing is another chance to get things as you would like to capture the image in camera. Now, I do want to add in a little caveat here, though. Don't think This means that you can photograph however you want and don't have to think about it too much because you can just fix any mistakes in processing or somehow magically make a dull image into an interesting one. While you can make some changes for sure and you can definitely add more interest to an image in processing, there are some things you won't be able to do. You can't correct missed focus. You can't bring back really blown highlights. If you have to bring up the exposure, you're going to make any noise in your image worse. You also can't really make an uninteresting image into a work of art. So aim to get it right in camera, but be safe in the knowledge that if you're not 100% perfect, 
no one need ever know. It's basically your photography safety net. And if you are thinking that editing is cheating in some way, and you know, if you think back to the days of film, we didn't have all this digital enhancements, I do want you to know that there has always been editing, even in the days of film. Film photographers would take their images, they would apply different colour toning, they would add dodging and burning to lead the viewer's eye around the frame or try and hide certain things. So editing has always been done, it's just that we have more options now than we ever did. If you don't feel that editing is an important part of the artistic process for you, that's absolutely fine. But do realise that you can make minimal edits and still be not cheating in your photography. Remember that photography is part technical and part artistic. And what you do back there in the editing suite behind your computer, or rather sat in front of your computer, is just an important part of the artistic process as what you capture in camera. Okay, moving on now. The third reason to edit your photos is because editing is another way for you to tell your story or get across what you were trying to capture when you took the photo. And that's because what you capture in camera sometimes doesn't accurately reflect that moment. Firstly, it could simply be because we didn't get our settings quite right, but mainly because you can enhance a mood or a general feeling in processing that you'll never really be able to fully do in camera. For example, you may not feel that you've accurately captured the warm, hazy feeling you felt on a late afternoon at the beach, in which case some processing can help enhance or create that mood, maybe by making it feel slightly warmer or adding in a little haze. You may wish to emphasise the moodiness in a portrait or the solemnness of an occasion, so you might want to convert it to black and white. Or you may wish to add a feeling of nostalgia and therefore give your image more muted tones might be something that you want to do. Or you might want to bring out a certain aspect of the image and bring your viewer's attention to it. So although telling a story can absolutely be done, at least to some degree when shooting, we can further enhance this in editing. And this is why editing is such a big part of the photography process. One half happens in camera and the other half happens in editing. It's like two sides of the same coin. And when you truly understand editing, you actually start to think of this when shooting too. So you get this beautiful relationship happening and you start to be able to shoot with more intent because you can actually visualize that end result. So editing, I feel, really helps not only with what you do back in the photography suite, but also when you're out shooting. Moving on now to number four, it can also help you develop a style. So editing is another way that you can put your own personal stamp on an image. Of course, it's definitely not just editing that allows you to do that, because a lot of that definitely happens in camera, for sure. But it is another way of putting your own unique look and feel to an image. Now, when you first start out editing your photos, there can be a tendency to be all over the place when it comes to editing your images. You may have a matte effect on one image here, go high contrast on another image here, go black and white uh, with a blue tone here, another black and white with a sepia tone here, and then a bright saturated image over here. And as a result, your images can look a little bit different from one day to the next. If that's you, first of all, don't worry. It can be really, really fun to experiment with different editing styles. And it is, without a doubt, a great way to learn how to edit. I also heartily recommend it so you can find out what you like and what you don't like. 
So don't worry too much if you haven't found your editing style yet. That certainly comes with time and as you develop your own photography voice. So we all started out editing our images in different ways. And then as we fine tuned our photography style and voice, we began to have more consistency with our work. You can also listen to the episode I recently recorded all about finding your photography style and voice. It's episode seven, so you can scroll back a couple of episodes to listen to it. Plus, I'll link to it in the show notes at livesnaplove.com forward slash nine. But once you have found your preferred editing style, you can use this consistently to give your images a more common look and feel and bring out the emotion of your photography voice. So you can see that we actually cover a lot when editing our images. We are making sure that we get the image to look exactly the way that we want it. We are making sure we can fix any in-camera mistakes. We are adding to our image by enhancing a particular mood or feeling or story. And we can use that to further fine tune our photography voice and give our images a more consistent look and feel. But where do you even start? So the best thing to do for learning how to edit your photos is to break it down into much more manageable steps and don't try to run before you can walk. A lot of people start diving straight into the creative edits, either by blindly following a tutorial that they see online or by using presets and actions. But really, we want to start off with a really solid foundation to our editing. So first off, try simply adjusting the image to get it the way you would have wanted to capture it in camera. So that's white balance correct, that's your exposure correct for the scene, that's no blown highlights or clipped blacks, and no obvious or distracting noise, unless of course you want to add noise to your image for any reason, and maybe bumping up the colour and the vibrance and the saturation a bit. You'll also want to remove any unwanted elements from the frame and crop into your image. Now, I call this your perfect negative, and I think it's always the first step in your editing process. It's the foundation for all of your other edits. So it's the first editing stack, and then you can layer more on after that. After you're able to do that perfect negative edit, then you can move on to playing with your image in a more creative way playing with color toning, uh, adjusting the amount of contrast, converting to black and white, learn how to pull your viewer's eye around the frame and to what's important. So how much or how little to do here is up to you. If you want your photos to look very natural, you may not wish to go too far into this creative adjustments. But equally, if like me, you see editing just as this ongoing part of the artistic process, then you can do as much here as you would like. So editing can range from simple, natural adjustments that the viewer would never be able to tell that editing had been applied, all the way through to a composite image that shows a different magical world. How much or how little editing to apply is up to you. You are the creator and the artist. Neither is right or wrong. It really depends on your unique style of photography. But in a nutshell, when it comes to editing, you want to get the foundations right first and then layer the rest on. Many people swoop into trying more creative edits when they don't have that foundation right. And then their images never look as good as they thought they would. Or worse, they look over edited because they've randomly followed a tutorial without thinking about what the image needs. And in fact, learning how to look at what your image needs is probably the most important aspect of editing. So it's there that I recommend you start. Don't forget, I have that editing checklist for you and that free class for using Lightroom Classic. And that's really going to help you understand how to edit your photos. So be sure to get that at the show notes for this episode at livesnaplove.com forward slash nine. And I'll leave a link to it around where you're listening to this episode. Okay, guys, thanks again for tuning in. Here's to making your photos look the best they possibly can. And I cannot wait to see all your beautiful photos online. I will see you here, same time, same place next week. Bye for now. 
So that wraps up this week's episode of Photography Made Simple. I'll be back at the same time, same place next week. But if you want more, head on over to livesnaplove.com forward slash podcast, where you can find all the resources and the downloads mentioned, plus a whole lot more. Finally, if you enjoyed the podcast, please be sure to subscribe and that way you won't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week.